Well, hello, folks. Welcome to the Wolf Den at Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, where we just don't talk fishing. Aluminum boats, Suzuki outboards, ugly stick tiger rods, let's see, Icy Tech coolers. We don't just talk that. We also talk knives. And the subject here I was just going to touch a base with is the holy grail of knives. Everybody has their own holy grail of knives. For me, I look at a holy grail as a one and done. There's a lot of subjects on that on YouTube. A one and done that's all you need for your tasks, your EDC, your work, whatever. A one and done. And that is what I have been searching for for a long, long time. And I can go through a few that could be holy grails, but guess what? They're holy grails of maybe that particular type of category. And let's start with a buck 110. This is the holy grail when it comes to, you know, over a half a pound of knife. Not a daily carry, by no means. I actually used to, for a long while, carry a buck 110 every day on my hip and did you know that actually I started to get back pain and it wasn't like back pain it was kind of like uh, the same kind of pain that you might get with a kidney stone it was sort of muscle pain but it was back there by the old kidneys because that's exactly where that knife hung 12 to 14 hours a day. So I got off the carrying the buck 110 bandwagon. But this is my holy grail of bucks. It is so new and so nice and that this knife is so tight. But it's not something I'm going to carry all the time. I, it's just not going to happen. Okay? It can't happen anymore. I was carrying ones probably a little lighter than this and literally getting like a pain. And I was wondering, God, where's this coming from? So a antler silver bolster, mirror polished blade, wonderful case. I got the uh, tan buckskin with it. Let's see, where is that? Let me show you, this is what I got with it when, I, when it came to ordering this, the tan buckskin. So that's very, very nice. But am I gonna carry it? No, this is a knife drawer queen. So let's set that there. As a matter of fact, I don't even keep it in the open. I wipe it all down. I mean, <laughs> really? Is this what we do? Yeah, this is what we do all right. And then I actually keep it in this old case from well, some other knife. I actually keep it in this padded case. So that's a holy grail of one type. But then again, here's a real lightweight buck that at one point I thought this was the holy grail. This is a buck titanium covered in complete black. 
it's lighter weight. But I mean, this here could, can be easily a $250 knife in absolute pristine condition. And really does have a super collector uh, sort of value. They also come in brushed. They also come in crystalline finish. I think I have one down here. I can show you. Yeah, here's one in the kind of goldish crystalline finish. Are these, are these holy grails? Yes, they are. I was carrying one of these every single day in a nylon sheath like this. I still do. I still do and I still will. But at the same time, it's a different kind of holy grail knife. It really is. So let's move this one on up here. So to somebody, there could be a very simple holy grail. A holy grail to somebody else could be a cool knife that's lightweight, sharp, snappy, just durable as all get out. And to me, that's what this Boker Kalashnikov is. It don't, it don't weigh much. It don't weigh much. It's an auto that is mega snappy. And it's got kind of a satin finished blade of S30V, not OS8. So this is going to stay sharper longer. But this is sort of not that big of a knife. That's the Buck 110 type size, even though it's called a 560. And look at that. This is actually smaller. Now, I mean, if you really want to whip out just a serious Buck and see, and then, you know, I hear as, as another type subject, I mean, I, I was carrying different bucks for sort of different feelings going on here. Okay, I mean, here's the classic. And let's look at the Kalashnikov up against the classic. Let's move that and bring the Kalashnikov in. All right, a little bit longer, way heavier. I mean, this is aluminum compared to brass and a lot of stainless. And this is hollow. So that right there could be an EDC classic for me. Grail. Sort of a holy grail kind of knife. It really could be. I mean, then I looked up and I found... You know, aluminum frame, buck 110 type knives. But then they had issues with those stupid thumb studs that were on them that press on and then don't want to go back on without you, know, like, destroy them. I don't know what buck was thinking. But this I happened to find, and it's got super quality steel, small blade, it is comfortable even in my hand. Okay. So, yeah. That could be a serious holy grail knife for somebody who isn't sort of a collector. They would wear and carry this. You notice it doesn't have a pocket clip because I wear this in a scout carry position with, I think I did a video with these bands that go over my nylon belt. And this is how I carry all my EDCs anymore, everyday carries. My belt would go through this, and then this goes in there like that. I no sheaths, no pocket clips. I don't need. I don't need it. So, yeah, that could be. That's actually a kind of a holy grail EDC for me. It really is. But then. I did a video about this one. 
the Randall King knives. Aluminum, a safety. I did a short video about this. And this dude is one big knife. Not cold steel big, but big. So let's see. All right, well, so there you go. Even the buck, even this titanium 560 buck. Is that a holy grail? Yes, yeah, to me, yes it is. Because that knife right there, in my opinion, is as quality as a Protec, a uh, Microtech. I mean, this thing is quality through and through. With a safety, okay? It only, it only has a safety when you close it. Thin, lightweight, and super snappy and extremely tactical. Aluminum backspacer. So yeah, this here is a holy grail. Not many people have these. And you're not going to find these just falling off a stump at some knife you know, uh, online knife place. You're not going to find them. So that's a holy grail. This could be a holy grail for a very simple, non-massive knife guy. Because that's, they look at this and go, man, that's all I'd ever need. But what was Dave's holy grail? The white whale. It's out there. It's out there. You've seen it. You can't get it. You keep looking and looking and looking. It's that white whale. You've, you've heard about it. Other people have told you about it. Well, one day, I'm perusing around on Zuckerbook on a knife group. Remember when knife groups used to be forums well this is a knife group that oh my god you know everybody's on there buying and selling because that is what the place was for that is what it was for but I still broke the rules and I got banned can you believe that I still did something wrong like it's so god dang earth shaking. I got banned for like, you know, a week or something by the masters of society because I posted a link to a YouTube video. Oh my god, kill me. I mean, that, I'm off of all that bullshit. They can kiss my ass. How about that? Same thing I told the Buck Collectors Club. Kiss my ass. There you have the Buck Collectors Club. They collect knives, and all they want to do is put up Instaface pictures of how cool they are with their new procurements. They don't trade, they don't buy, they don't sell, they don't do anything. Bunch of old, you know, wannabes. So, but one day, I happen to be on, a, on what I consider it's like a forum. Okay, but it's a Zuckerbook group. It's a group. And I wasn't even looking for it. And my holy grail showed up, so I jumped on it like stink on the manure pile. And what is that? The Micros, Microtech L-U-D-T. What do you, if you're not familiar... What does L-U-D-T stand for? It's weird. Microtech is one. They make quality knives, but it's one weird company. It says L right there and an underwater demolition team. 
people call the L for light, large, right? Well, tons of billboarding. Literally has a serial number and a born on date, January of 2019. Made in USA, and the steel is LMAX. Blue, closed in, I like that. I just don't like two pieces of crap put together with some posts in there. That really is what I consider kind of cheesy. See? Kind of cheesy. But it works for this. Because, I mean, this is like a $40 knife if you get OS 8. This one wasn't. This one's about 65 So. And this was my absolute holy grail for EDC. And it because it was the white whale. They make these. And then they just stop making them. Micro micro uh, tech is not a big enough company. Let's face it. They make stuff, and then they just stop. And they might bring it out again. But they're so busy making those out the front knives, they just sometimes forget all about what made them successful and this made them very successful and this is extremely copied boker has a copy basically of this everybody's kind of either got a copy of this or they copied somebody else to an extent this has a perfect blade shape. Now am I just over the, absolutely over the whole earth over this thing? Eh. Because they got their proprietary nuts and screws or whatever here, hardware, as you can see in everybody else's videos. And they don't want you to open it up. If they want you to open it up, then you got to buy a hundred and twenty-five dollar toolage to do it. And borderline ripoff, borderline. Okay, it's getting you into their ecosystem. Once you're in your their ecosystem, then you're going to continue to buy Microtech knives, be it either these types out the side out the front, whatever they make, because now you're invested. I don't like being so invested. You know, I don't like doing that. I like to be able to flow around if I want to. But aluminum, blue, I didn't care. But I did care about black. Black blade. I did care about that. And is it the most perfect fitting in my hand? Nah, not necessarily. If I go back there, look at this. I'm almost falling off the cliff here with the handle. But it's got the jimping on the blade. Everybody talks how it's got this rounded top blade. Very nice. The details of this thing are what make it super sweet. Kind of like this. The details in this knife is what makes this super sweet. That's what really does it. Is there details in this that make it super sweet? Eh, not really. Was there details in my holy grail buck? Yeah, it's aesthetically beautiful. Is there details in this? Yeah. Yeah. This is titanium, but they went ahead and they blackened it. And the blade and everything, it's kind of mysterious. 
and it's a beautiful lockback. I don't like liner locks. I don't like frame locks. I don't like flippers. I like lockbacks or the autos. That's my thing. So it, this comes with this, which is kind of nice because of the fact that when I run this in that same thing I just showed you, this goes on my belt and I run this in. This one is brand new, so it's not all stretched out like the one I have on my belt. I end up running the clip on the outside like that. And then as this is riding on my belt, let's say, this is a really good idea. And it comes out in one fell swoop. So this is my EDC. And like I started out saying, your EDC to you, to me, means different things, you know, or your grail knife means different things. Mine means one and done. I'm going broke, thinking mentally about different knives, shopping for knives. I don't want to spend any more on knives. I really don't. I know, Oral Walk, the number one contributor to my channel, says, yeah, you're, you'll give it a break. You'll be right back again. You're, 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 just, you're just getting at that. You're at that little peak, and you're going to fall off the peak, and you'll be right back in again. Well, I'm going to do everything I can to sustain for quite a while. I still hunt. I still look. I've got one right now that I found. I mean, the problem is the prices these days. I mean, I got off the buck bandwagon real fast when everything that's any decent knife whatsoever is $250. Anything, any custom buck. I mean, there's one sitting on eBay right now that I would love to have. It's sold at Smoky Mountain Knife Works for $99 in 2017. $99. It's very similar to my buck here. It's got an antler, stag, or whatever handle. The guy originally wanted $600. Well, over time, because he'll never, ever, ever move that knife. And this guy is so moronic that he's just going to sit the knife there and let it collect dust at his pawn shop. But I offered him a year ago. I said, I'll give you three fifty dollars for it because I'm telling you, it is another one of these type knives right here. It is another one of these with all kinds of special features. It was $99 and the Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive. Well, he dropped it to five fifty, dollars And it just sits there and renews on eBay every 30 days. Every 30 days. When is this guy going to come off and join planet Earth? But even this, this was several hundred dollars less than this. This was brand new in the box. You can go and get four of these, three or four of these, for this. So, and it's because no one has these. No one really has them. Because Microtech is not big enough to be like CRKT, to be like Buck, to be like the monster, monster company that Boker is, where they're global, literally all over the place. And they just don't make these. So when they don't make them, it's kind of like it makes you want one. I wanted one 
because people raved about what a great EDC this was. It's like gasoline. Little bit being made, and everybody wants it right now. That is my number one factor in life right now. The scum in Washington have no earthly idea. That is how I live and breathe, is these fuel prices are absolutely devastating me. Um, I don't go nowhere. I don't do anything. Blade Show is this weekend in Atlanta. Could I go to that? Hell no. Hell no. So, that is the Holy Grail. And it's a one and done. So, I hope that I am not going to be showing you anything relatively new, anything expensive for a long time time and you probably say as subscribers whoo thank god this was a fishing channel no it's a dave channel it's a dave does what he wants channel that's what it has been for 14 years 14 years so i just thought i would go over a grail knife a grail knife. A grail knife. It could be grail knife. A grail knife. But what is my true definition of a grail knife these days in this United States of America and the way everything is? Something's got to give. A grail knife now is a one and done. So, I don't know how you treat a grail knife, but that's it. Every day, 365, it's going to sit in one of these sleeves on my belt. I almost wish I could take this pocket clip off because I really don't need it. It would make the knife so much slicker. So, my thoughts on one and done, hit the subscribe, as everybody always says, and give it a thumbs up. I, I mean, do y'all know where to do thumbs ups on these smartphones? Because other people get thumbs ups, and I'll get, you know, I don't know, 175 views in, you know, 24 hours or something, or 48 hours, or 599 hours. Okay, and I'll get three thumbs up. I mean, all that's doing is telling YouTube, yeah, this guy's okay. It doesn't matter the the you know the production value. It's not nothing. All it is is the Chinese social credit score. That's it. So that's the reason why everybody asks for you to hit that button. That's the only reason. So, thanks for watching. And I'm hoping, as I said, that you're not going to see many more knives. Let's hope so.